began with about four people in Matt Pitt's basement a few years ago. What has all these brushing the church doors? Church like you've never seen before. Now developed into an extremely popular Christian worship experience for hundreds, even thousands of people. It's grown from 1,400 to about 5,000 in five months' time. It continues to grow. Four to 5,000. It started out just a handful of folks. Now thousands attend the service. Matt's basement went from this to this. It's outgrown Matt's house, a series of other churches, and it's packed by the thousands. We're trying to show them, man, that God's real, he's alive, and he can do things through him, and we do it in a radical way. This is not your typical worship experience. It's the hottest party in town with a powerful message. Really unbelievable, it's something you have to see to believe. It's now considered the largest youth movement in the nation. Here we go, here we go. Make some noise in this place. Hold that, DJ. Hey, we are honored to have every single person here tonight. Man, you're a part of like something more for us. This is a little bit of a dream. We started years ago in a basement, in a basement in Roebuck, Alabama, man. And here we are at a bigger arena downtown 
We always say, we got to get downtown, and at the basement, if it's your first night or you're watching by television right now live, we're going to all say something to you that's from our heart here at the basement. We're not perfect. We are just, come on, say it loud. Forgiven. Say it loud. Forgiven. They said forgiven if you didn't hear that. But tonight, let's go ahead and get into this. I, I just want to say off the cuff, man, how many of y'all getting ready to get some epic night moment here? We're going to have a good night. Let me hear you say, yeah. yeah. Come on, say, yeah. This is what I want to do, if you don't mind. Let's just start and talk to, I, I got to see, Pat, if you don't mind, bring up the lights. We got a lot of folks here tonight. Maybe they've traveled around. Do we have any youth pastors in the house, senior pastors, leaders, people have come? Will you stand up, man? Let's honor you. Let us honor you. Let us honor you. Let us honor you. We honor our folks with bittersweet. We honor them. Come on, give it up for them. Thank y'all for coming. Come on, come on, give it up for them. Give it up for them. We got people right now, it's about 2 o'clock, watching from Afghanistan, Iraq, troops. We're glad you joined us tonight. You're going to have a good special service for you. Come on, give it up for the men who serve our country. Give us the opportunity to worship live and free. But just in case there's any, you know, like police officers, we also want to say to the police officers that have helped us with this entire event, blocking off, I mean, streets, the mayor, everybody, the sheriff. Mayor, we all give them just one more honor. I believe in honor of those who help in every way. They took a chance on helping us, huh? Come on. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it was crazy. Where are the ladies at? Come on, give me some lights. Where are the ladies at? Stand up with your fancy self. Oh, fancy, huh? Look. Fancy, huh? Get a look. Ladies, you are, no, don't sit down. You are fancy. Sit, stand up. Stand up with your fancy self. Stand up. Ladies, stand up. From ages 1 to 102, ain't nobody too young or too old. Check yourself. God moves and everybody's involved. Amen? Now, just in case you brought a friend or a visitor and you didn't want to look weird in front of them, here we go. You're going to. You ready? Now, there's girls that watch. I'm telling you, I was in a village one time, and these young little princesses were watching. I said, hey, back home, we, we, we got some attitude, you know? And I was telling them, you got to be fearfully and wonderfully made. And they are like, really? So look, I know you're watching from another country tonight. Here's all my sisters, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna stand up with you. Get the crowd. Here we go, ladies. Let's show them what we do. Put them fists up like this. Get your snap on. Make sure every guy in Alabama hears you. Come on, say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Come on, say it with some swagger. Say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Last time, say this. I got some of my Alabama Auburn football players in the house. I want to let them know what time it is. Put them up. Say this with me. Say, I am so fine. Yes, you are. Stay standing. Fellas, I know we ain't going to let them talk to us like that, correct? Man, I didn't say boys. I said, hey, fellas, I know we ain't going to let them talk to us like that, right? Stand up then. Get your fist pump on. Where the? Yeah. Look at the fellas, they feeling that swag now. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Hey DJ, you got that one song home on Audible. Hey y'all, show your love for Bird. That's my boy right there. He's the greatest DJ I know. He always knows he can hear my mind. Hey DJ, you got you remember that skating rink? They, they were doing the pump song. You remember that skating ring song? Pump, pump the gym. Pump, pump the gym, pump it up. Why your feet are stumping? I used to love skating it out. All right, stop. Some of these fellas look like they've been pumping up. Come on now, let's give them a round of applause. We fellas be looking big up in here. Fellas, put your fist in the air. My mama used to say, Matt, you ought to be proud of God. He's proud of you. Genesis 127 says you are created in the image of Almighty God. Say it loud, not like a boy, but like a man. Say, I am a creation of Almighty God. Come on, say it. I am a creation of Almighty God. All right, DJ, here we go. We're going we're gonna to start in time. No, no, no errors. We're just going to move music. I, there's a lot of people here who can dance, so we're just going to kind of move the times. Can we go back? Look at your neighbor and say, a generation is 40 years. Come on, say, a whole generation is 40 years. Let's start back about 40 years ago. Do y'all remember these guys? I get around. I get around. Hey, hey, what did little John come out for? Going back, little John, this wasn't your song, dog. That little heard the music came to party. <laughs> now, hold on a second. Let's just keep moving, DJ. Now, 
do y'all remember that dance song? I mean, there was this one song, this girl came out, like, I, I gotta move past that era. Do y'all remember that one song where she came out and said, I just wanna dance with somebody? Oh, I dance with somebody. I feel like with somebody. DJ, I feel like, like we got some rock and rollers in the house. My mom used to not let me listen to music growing up. I'd ha I had always convinced her that it was godly music. I said, godly, mom. This is godly song. She'd be like, why? And I'd say, because they said we could live on a prayer. Do y'all remember this song? <laughs> Halfway there. That, that just makes, I, I don't even know how to dance today. I got too much thug in me. Look at your neighbor and say, you living, man. You're breathing, man, only because of a prayer. Only because of what? Yeah. Only because of what? Yeah. Hey, DJ, let's just keep, y'all, they kind of in a good mood tonight. How about some old school 90s whoop? <laughs> there, I got them. There, I got them right there. <laughs> Crank it up. Ah, you better stop. I feel like I was at prom. I'm going to stop right now. I feel weird. My mom's like, Jesus. There he goes again, going back to the world. I don't ever know what she means, but going back to the world. I'm like, I, I, we live in a world, Mom. She's like, but you're in the world. <sighs> There's that one dude, though. I got to give him props, man. Little, bit, little dude talking about one. I don't hate. I don't hate. Hey, DJ, y'all know that one song where they get down, they talk, I put my hair <laughs> DJ, huh? I'm saying, hey, that, that just, they get crazy. Y'all having a good time tonight? Come on, look at your neighbor and say, when I ask you, I want to hear you loud. You're living on a what? You're living on a what? Find your quick seat real quick so we can get back in this. Find a quick seat real quick. So we moved through a generation, right? And that's kind of how it happens. And something happens to us all. The song happened. I I'm going to be as blunt to tell you. How many of y'all know God's love is amazing? I don't even know how I heard any different, man. His love is amazing. Like he, he says there's absolutely nothing. They can separate you from my love. He is that awesome. Give, give him a round of applause for loving us like that. He likes you for your past. He likes you with your present. And he already knows your future. And he's what we call unconditional. My mom used to say it all the time, man. Many of you already know this, but I've seen a lot of people travel. And I just want to tell you, tonight's a part for us is explaining to you all the... I feel like you're sitting around people who might have been told no a lot in their life. I feel like a lot of folks in here maybe can bear with me on the fact that some of us wasn't supposed to finish school. Everybody said no. A lot of folks in here, would, would if they could tell you a lot of the things they've been through, it, you'd be surprised. Most of my life, I wasn't supposed to finish elementary, they told my mom. And by second grade, learning disability student, ADD, ADHD, he got all these problems. He can graduate. Fifth. How, how do you not graduate fifth grade? I mean, I was like, come on, you gotta, you got to pass us just to make us feel good, you know? And, and I got to middle school, and then they said the same thing. It was like, no, 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 the, my entire life. But my mama always said, God says yes. God uses you no matter what. He loves you no matter what. And so tonight, if you get anything out of this, we got something special in store for you tonight. But if you get anything out, man, we just want to remind you how amazing God's love is. I'm telling you, it's, it's awesome, and I, have a, I can't communicate how awesome. That's the problem. But I can tell you this, a building right next door. My mom would say, Matt, don't share it. I'll share it. A building right next door about eight years ago, if I could. You know, people always hear about the basement story, and they hear, well, it started in a basement, you know, and where's it going? No, no, actually, I would have to say it probably started in a jail cell. I stood right next door from where we're at. I don't know what you've been through, but I'll, I'll prove tonight that God will use you no matter what. I remember being in that cell one night. Forgive me, Mom and Dad, but you were there. It was unconditional. You picked me up. and I remember sitting there, though, in that cell thinking, where has my life come to? I'm 19 years old. 
Where am I going? And, and, and you know, God don't like just stop loving you because you're somewhere like that. Oh, he was still there going, you know, you don't, you don't need to be here, Matt. I, I got bigger plans than this. You could settle if you wanted to keep doing this kind of lifestyle, but I got big plans. Huh? And I was like, you know, you got to ask, you, yeah, right, God, you don't got big plans for me. And he's like, no, I said it. For I know the big plans I have for you. I know the future. I know the hope. I know where you're going. And I would be like, but I ain't going nowhere here. Look at me, man. How can I do anything? I, I can't do anything right with my life. God, I'm in jail. And he was, you know, his word's his word. He would flip another verse that my mom would say. And he would say, no, 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 even here. I use everything that's bad for the good if you love me. And I would remind myself, like, yeah, I love you. And I remember leaving one night. I'm, I'm glad we did it right here downtown because you got City Hall right here. You got a lot of his, historical things right here at this moment. But for me personally, I, I, when I walked up, I, was, I always had that feeling like I know I shouldn't, you know, speak, God, because you know me. And, and he reminds me, no, I knew you over there. And you're not who you were. You, you might not be who you want to be, but you sure ain't who you used to be. And somebody said, yeah. Because you know why? You're living on a... And my mom, I could even be in there that night, I, I just wanted her to show up because my mama could pray. And she'd be like, man, I can pray and break the jail cells, you know. And I'd be like, man, you're crazy. He's still smoking weed, you know. And, no, she didn't. I mean, she just loved God so much, I thought that's what she did and stuff. And... Uh, she would talk crazy, and I remember leaving a cell one night right there. I'm just going to be blunt. I want to say it. We got a lot of officers here, and I just want to pay respect, and, and I left, and I, I made a decision. I don't know a decision you have to make tonight, but I made a decision that I was going to stop hanging with the crowd that was taking me nowhere. I was going to stop making bad choices, and God promised me if you would learn how to pray to me, just talk to me. Just holler at me in the morning and in the evening. And if you would just worship me, I didn't know what worship is like, put some Canton Jones in, man. Just put it in, you know, ain't no, so, no certain style. And just worship me, man. If you'll do that, not only will I be your savior and your king, but, man, I'll be your friend. And, and you know, being a friend of God, I'm going to say it right here, right now, because some of you don't, you don't believe that. You don't, you, maybe you don't know if you could be a friend of God. And that's the problem I'm going to have tonight is I wanted to tell you how awesome his love is. But, man, I couldn't, I couldn't communicate if I tried. And the teachers were right. On that end, I, I can't. He is so awesome that, that as I came home, I'll never forget something my parents told me. My mom set me down. She believed no matter what, even leaving there. My dad was really upset. It was getting time for him to kick me out of my house. Some of you here tonight think you're on the end of your ropes, man. I, well, I was a step away from being homeless. And God decided to use me. But it was all because a woman looked at me and said, man, I've been praying. And I know if I pray, I can call on God. He'll answer me, and he'll show me great and mighty things in your life. <laughs> it's a promise. It's a 100% guarantee, Matt. And I looked at it, and I said, well, I know that'd be like living on a... <laughs> and prayers unfold. Some gifts got to shake out of the raft that's around them. Some gifts just got to realize you were made for a purpose or you wouldn't be here. God says it, it's his word, that you were put here for a reason. You're never a mistake. You can't mess up a gift. A gift's a gift, and it's discovered. And when it is, it blesses those around us. I remember when my mom sat with me and explained in the basement of my house, my dad, Matt, he, he, he can do it for your dad. He was an alcoholic for 25 years. He can do it with you. And what's the point, Mom? It's a, it's a gift. Matt, you're a gift from him to us and we want to worship and pray together if we do we can make a difference in the world we live in and I would pray with them and believe it and tonight since we're here many of you've been on this with us she was right she prayed and I was living on it she was right from that basement I watched my dad deliver 25 years in one day I watched my sister's hair put back on her head from depression. I watched him clean up an old crusty attic. And he said, I'll use the basement of your house. Poor does not matter. Age does not matter. Thank you.
Something you have to believe. Hard to believe. Radio All this speaking it with about four people in right now. Kids basement a few years ago. They've been saying what's yet to come to wake up America. Sometimes you just gotta hear the moment. What's to be discovered in you that we might not yet know? And you know what? It is a moment. It's a time that you, and you just got to pull it off the shelf. You got to say, man, I'm ready to use what God's given me. I watch my dad every single day, still a hero to me, use the gift that he has. His gift is to spray bugs. And then he uses that same gift to tell people God loves them no matter what. <laughs> And to this day, he still has the same excitement, passion, and, and courage, and boldness. I would get scared every day to wake up and have to go in some maybe stranger's house. And, and, and as I'm working, begin to tell him that God loves you no matter what. But I watch him. And as he uses that gift, man, people, people get saved. And in the Bible, the only recording I can find when all of heaven rejoices is when one person... <laughs> comes to his name. You don't have to do a big thing to get God's attention. You just grab one heart and you have it. And so tonight we still stay upon our Just One More campaign, but if you, if you don't know how awesome his love is, you will. If you don't know that you're a gift, we're telling you tonight by God's word, that's what he says is 100%. It works. You are a gift from God to be discovered and to use it, to make every day count because people matter. No matter where you sit tonight, I just want to establish this and make sure you understand this assurance that no matter what you're going through, no matter what you've been through, if you have guilt, shame, things been going wrong in your life, maybe you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, you don't see hope coming. Hope is around the corner. Every setback is a setup for a comeback. And the world is yet to see what God's love with a gift can do when it moves. And I'm seeing all across the country, and here we are tonight to witness a moment, that in your life and mine, God can use one or he'll use a few, but I watched two boys on a university campus by themselves begin to worship and pray, and they say it's the largest college movement in America. And it blows my mind because somewhere they decided, I don't want to be average. I don't want to sit. I want to do something with the love of God. And if you ever taste prayer, if you ever taste worship, if you ever jump out on it and, 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 and establish this moment and you live on what I call a prayer, you will see things happen that has never happened before in our entire generation. And it's about to unfold because we're up against a brand new era. And God will use people you least expect. He will use the ordinary things. Things, but if you do what you've always done, you will get what you've always got. And if you're tired of the same old thing, tonight I ask you to fill up. Believe this, that you're a gift. And I dare you to move. You're going to begin to see heroes jump up at the age of eight. At the age as a teenager, at 20, 30, some at 60, some at 70, some at 80. 90, 100, it's never been a problem for God. At 600 years old, Noah began to enter the ark, a king at eight. Well, right here with nobody moving, every single eye open, look up and look around. Some people, we got guests in the house. It would be hard to stand in front of football teams and athletes of all. But no, with the lights up, this moment comes once for people. In 100 years, it won't matter but knowing Christ and making him known. So as everybody's looking around, don't dim the lights so they feel okay. Put them up. When I say stand, let it be a moment that you move where you are. Just stand for God. Stand right now. Stand, 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 stand. That's it. That's it. Some people go, am I standing to ask him in my life? I don't know. Am I giving my heart to him? I don't know. Am I answering the call? I always say yes. Yes. Why don't you grab a shot of that, England? Why don't you grab a shot of that, Israel? Central America, South Africa. Troops, are you standing with us where you are? 
Bible studies have been happening in Afghanistan and Iraq. Worship movements are birthed. Look at the people here, unashamed with the lights bright and loud. The times are coming. People want truth. Truth sets a man free. We're going to say a prayer. We say it loud and proud. And we say it. I say it every night. Say it with me if you don't mind. Say, Jesus, Lord, I ask you to be my king, my master. Forgive me for yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Lord, I ask you to fill me with love, peace, joy. They say it's your spirit. Teach me and guide me in all your ways, in all your truths. I've got an article they wrote today about what we're going to be doing in the newspaper. I didn't know that they were going to plan it. They talk about it, and it is a movement of prayer and worship. It's a movement of people that don't care. And in this article, it says at the very end, after the service here, we usually do an altar call, and we have networks here watching, so we ought to stay in here. But the problem is, we always say, whatever we do in here should be done out there. Here's what I'm going to propose to you tonight. It says it like this. He said that when they come together, that they might, I don't know about might, I would love to see everybody, I told the guy, go out to the street. And as we do it, here's what we've been known for. Asking people to not just stand in buildings anymore. There's days coming, movements coming, where people will pray and worship in streets. So why don't you come out? Let's go to a park and give God glory. We'll worship, make history once and for all in this city. Let's go. We've been saying there's a day coming where we'll do it in streets all over America where people will stand for God. It'll be black, Kenton. It'll be white. It'll be red. It'll be yellow. It'll be Baptist. It'll be Methodist. It'll be Catholic. They call them Pentecostal. We step over denominational barriers as the people come and they still come. Yep, we did exactly what we said we would do. They said, would they go in the lawn? We come into the lawn. We'll worship out here over our city. This is the time, this is the hour where God is raising up people who are bold and who are unashamed for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you are changing history.